you know, I'm not too much focused on playing for Canada now, I think, because, yeah, Bangladesh is interesting. I've been a lot more open to it recently. I think, yeah, now I'm keeping my options open and I, I want to consider it, or at least, you know, I'm looking into it now. Appreciate all the love and support, and uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Hopefully, Bangladesh can have good success uh, coming up, and maybe I can be a part of that too. Never expected to go pro or have the chance. It happened pretty quick, you know, going from uh, FC Edmonton to MLS. It's a very high standard MLS compared to the other leagues because there's more money, um, there's more support, there's more fans, bigger attendances. And yeah, it was probably the best game I played and I got a goal, which was nice. Uh, you know, I still have the match ball, which is pretty cool. I got man of the match that game. I think at the end of the day, I just matured a lot and learned a lot about the game and um, just learned a lot about myself too. I looked up to like Cesc Fabregas a lot with Arsenal because I was an Arsenal fan. I kept pushing my parents along. They kept saying, when are you going to stop? When are you going to stop? And I just said, well, see, I'll just keep going. As soon as you have a skin color or you have, you know, you look different, it can it can create problems. But it's all about where you are. Uh, I think I'll say Rakib. Haha! I I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I know my I know my history. Assalamualaikum everyone. Welcome to a special edition of the Footy Show. And as I said, special, it's actually very, very special because we have someone today alongside us, a very exceptional guest, okay. who is the first ever Bangladeshi descendant football to have played in MLS, the Canadian Premier League, and also the FIFA Club World Cup. So joining us all the way from Edmonton, Canada, is Shamit Shum. Thank you for Hello. joining us, Faya. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. We'll start the conversation uh, with the story of your journey as a professional footballer. Uh, you know, like uh, in February 2016, you signed your first ever professional contract with FC Edmonton. And uh, you performed brilliantly throughout the season and uh, made it to the higher levels in MLS. But we'll talk about FC Edmonton first. Like, how was the process uh, from the academy level uh, to the first team? What was the journey like? Yeah, I never expected to go pro or have the chance, but um, yeah, it came from, you know, I played in the academy, I played with, you know, people my age, and I was doing well in the academy. I got called up to the Canada U20 team, and there I did really well. After that, they offered me a first team contract, and even then, my plan was just, okay, do the first team contract uh, while doing university, kind of do both. Uh, and then the season went well, and then the rest is kind of history. I had, one, I had a good year. Uh, a couple, luckily, a couple injuries on other players that were older than me, probably more experienced, uh, early on in the season, and so that kind of gave me a chance to play because I didn't start right away in my first season. It probably took five or six games um, to get into the team. Obviously, I had to work hard and stuff, and then some injuries happened, and then I got my chance. And after that, I I got to keep my spot for pretty much the rest of the season, and then I got the move to to Montreal with uh, MLS. Yeah, you performed very well in that particular tournament because. Uh, you signed your first professional contract in February 2016, and then in January 2017, you moved to MLS. Like, uh, they picked you from the draft. Uh, so, in such a quick period, you made it to the MLS at the age of 19, I think. Um, so, how was that bit of an experience, and uh, uh, what was the thing that really stood out for you? It happened pretty quick, you know, going from uh, FC Edmonton to MLS. And I was pretty young, 19, and then I moved away from home first time. So it was a little bit difficult at first, you know, I didn't have my parents and, you know, we're so used to being with our parents. Um, so, yeah, I took a bit of getting used to the first year was a bit difficult or just getting, you know, settled in. And then after that, the next couple of years were good. Um, I kind of found my footing, uh, got comfortable living on my own, living in a new city. Um, and then, yeah, I was able to have, you know, some decent success there. Um, but, yeah, this overall, I think the level is different in MLS is just the, you know, the way the way the players think, the athleticism. Um, the technical yeah. quality is is a lot more compared to let's say CPL or FC Edmonton when I played back then. It was those leagues are a bit more physical, whereas MLS focuses a lot more on football and transition, um, attacking with with pace, defending with pace. Um, but yeah, overall very cool experience. You know, playing in front of twenty, thirty thousand fans. I mean, the biggest crowd I played in front of was sixty thousand, so that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, very cool experience. And I got to travel around Canada and USA and just uh, see different cities too while traveling for these games. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, so you played there for a number of seasons, right? You uh, played four seasons in MLS. Um, mm -hmm. So how was the overall experience? Like the, the things you take from 
uh, that level like it's a very high level compared to the others so how was your overall journey in mls like you played for a number of years and uh, yeah i uh, think from that yeah i enjoyed it a lot the like the first year was difficult maybe the first two years were difficult because you know i wasn't playing as much i wasn't getting a chance i had injuries and then it was hard to get in the team so it was frustrating and i would you know kind of be you know sad disappointed angry uh not understanding why i wasn't playing and then you know my third year i think 2019 uh, end of 2018 beginning of 2019 it kind of all clicked uh, and i started getting an opportunity i started playing well better in training which what tra- which is what translated to me getting on the field and then i had a good uh, good chance and you know i kind of took that pretty well in 2019 um and yeah i was looking to build on it and then 2020 came covid happened um and then it all kind of became a bit tricky but yeah overall it was you know cool i think at the end of the day i just matured a lot and learned a lot about the game and um just learned a lot about myself too so very very good experience played with a lot of you know big time players against a lot of big time players so very cool very unique experience that you know not many people can say yeah and uh, if i if i want to know the one particular moment or one cherishable moment that you have from mls special moment yeah yeah sure yeah yeah probably my probably my goal that i scored it was an easy goal but it was a game we played in in new england in uh, boston we won 3 nothing um and yeah it was probably the best game i played and i got a goal which was nice uh, you know i still have the match ball which is pretty cool i got man of the match that game um and it was funny because leading up to the game our flight to boston got canceled uh the day before we were stuck at the airport all day uh and then we we caught a flight in the morning charter flight straight to the game in the morning got to the hotel stayed in the hotel for about 20 minutes and then went straight to the game so so very hectic uh, lead up to the game but very uh, yeah very special moment that i remember all right so all right. so and tell us about the experience in fifa club world cup like you were the first ever, i mean the only bangladesh recent footballer to have played in uh, fifa club world cup or to be in that yeah i think that was the fifa world cup qualifiers with uh, cuz we were doing it in the champions league for concacaf so pretty cool experience we played against the costa rican team um and then we ended up beating them saprisa Uh, so we got to play in Costa Rica you see a different style of football a bit more you know central america south america the way they play tiki taka small shifty wingers um so very cool experience and then we played against our honduran team which is a little bit different a bit more physical a bit more dirty um but yeah just different types of football so very interesting very cool experience um and yeah we're we're our, our team in the CPL is going to be a part of the qualifiers for that this coming season so so that'll be exciting to see if we can uh, make it far but we'll see and in montreal impact you played under thierry henry the, the arsenal legend in fact the premier league legend uh, and the world cup winner for france so how was it like playing under him and uh, what was what was the advice that he has given you personally or what did you learn from him in person yeah it was it was very cool working with him i mean such a legend at first you see him and you're a bit nervous because he's a big guy big presence um and you know he's had so much success but Yeah, I definitely learned a lot from him and and it's something that I'm I'm picking up more and more now when I think back on it, but um kind of what he taught the most important thing was actually like patience and just to pause and uh slow the game down and so, you know, it it's it's easy to say but actually hard to do where you can, you know, wait a half second longer to play a pass or to make a decision. Um and that's when things actually open up. If you kind of pass the ball too quick, then you miss the chance to actually play, you know, a better pass or a good pass. Uh so something that was very something that was very interesting and something that you know he's a striker how would he think about that but i think the way he would explain it is also he knew he knew what let's say midfielders like me would 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 look for because he was the one making those runs so to be able to find those right passes to the striker for him to score or for the striker to score um that's kind of what i had to do is kind of take a pause and just wait a half second longer to wait for something to open up to maybe play that through ball or for, or that forward pass uh so yeah that was probably just one of the one of the the most interesting things and then just off the field like he was very strict in terms of like how we had to be uh timing for meetings practice uh practice coming up for for training he was very strict on your times and stuff um so yeah i mean even the most successful guy in in you know the premier league with arsenal has very high standards in terms of you know being punctual and all that so very interesting and uh, as a professional footballer when you're playing at that level at such high level at mls and uh, compared to the lower ones so what what are the difference that it makes like you know like the facilities the the surroundings the players coaches so overall what's the difference it makes when you're playing at such a high level compared to the low one 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's very, you know, it's a very high standard MLS compared to the other leagues because there's more money, um, there's more support, there's more fans, bigger attendances. Uh, so, yeah, the facilities are, are, you know, a big thing, training on grass and all that. But then if you go onto the field, the field is not probably a huge difference, but I think the main things are probably like the decision making, um, just the way, you know, MLS players or let's say that league, the decisions they make are always the right decisions. Whereas when you play in lower leagues, you sometimes get people making wrong decisions. It gets a bit more messier. And then when you make mistakes on top of mistakes, it just becomes a messier game. Um, and in MLS, they punish you more. If you make one mistake, it's a goal. Whereas in C in other leagues, you can get away with making mistakes and maybe they have a chance, but they don't score. You get lucky. MLS is very, you know, you have to be switched on all the time because if you make one mistake, the quality of the players, um, they'll punish you. Yeah, sure. And uh, in January 2021, you returned back to FC Edmonton in Canada, the, the Canadian Premier League. Uh, you played a couple of seasons with them, and in the previous season you have been with Cavalry FC, and in fact won the shield for the the side. So, how are you enjoying your football in Canada at the moment, and uh, what you are looking for in the new season? Yeah, I'm I'm enjoying it again with Calgary. You know, we did well. We won the league. You know, I was playing a lot, and so I enjoyed that. Um, and hopefully this next year we can kind of, you know, go back to back and kind of show the same success we had last year. So I think that's the challenge. And then, yeah, after that, I really don't know what uh, what I'm going to do. But for sure, this season, I'm excited. We have because we won the league. We have Champions League now. So we play against Orlando City MLS team. So that'll be cool. And then if we beat them, then we might play a team in, in Mexico. So we'll see. Could be very cool. OK, so now if we talk about uh, your the playing attributes, your uh, box to box midfielder, right? So mm -hmm. uh, is there any particular player that uh, you worldwide, I mean, uh, across the world, you want to emulate or you are looking forward to someone? Um, somebody that I look up to or somebody that I played with? Both. You can say both. Okay. Yeah. Well, well growing up, I, I looked up to like Cesc Fabregas a lot with Arsenal because I was an Arsenal fan. Um, and then I watched Tony Kroos a lot, really like Tony Kroos, the way he pa his passing skills. And then Luka Modric is dribbling and his engine in the midfield. Um, so those are the you know the guys that I grew up watching. And then some of the guys that I like playing with or that I you know what was like a guy like Victor Wanyama, um, such a big big body played for Tottenham, um, and he just really knew how to use his body so well because he was such a big guy. So he would never lose the ball no matter how much you try to win the ball or tackle him. He he would never lose the ball, which as a midfielder is really important. So um, yeah, that's probably what I'd say. Now we'll talk about a different topic like uh, in general. Uh, in your continent, like America or Canada, uh, uh, there are a number of uh, Bangladeshi and footballers in age levels, but they are not much uh, in the senior levels. They're not making it to the first team, mostly, apart from you and uh, Quinn Sullivan in MLS right now. So, so these are the two players in playing the top tier league. So, what are the challenges or what are the obstacles that Bangladeshi young footballers face there? Uh, and uh, do you think it's a, it's kind of a uh, family thing that Bengali parents typically don't want their kids to take up sports professionally, or uh, is it other factors involved as well? Yeah, I think so. I think family and all that is a big is a big thing where you have the pressure to not to not do that and go to a good university and focus on work and stuff. Which you know a lot of you know Bangladeshi people, their parents come here, come to Canada or America for a better life for your students to get an education, right? They come for the kids to to come get a better living, better school and all that. I don't know if it's true or not. But then at the end of the day, going and playing soccer is kind of different than what the parents expected. You know, they want the engineer, the doctor. So um, yeah, it's tricky. Maybe the, the kids don't have as much motivation from the beginning because they know it's not really a common path. Um, so yeah, for me, I'm lucky because I kept pushing my parents along. They kept saying, when are you going to stop? When are you going to stop? And I just said, well, see, I'll just keep going. Uh, and then, you know, I've, I've been running with it so far. So I'm definitely lucky. Um, but yeah, I just think it's it's kind of, you know, the stereotype where they where they want you to focus on education and not so much as professional soccer. And the game's changing, though, now, hopefully, because, you know, now I think people are starting to realize even the parents and whatnot with the new, with the, you know, the next generation of, you know, younger Bangladeshi kids in, in North America, USA, Canada, is that you can actually have a pretty good career playing soccer, you know, just... You know, because also they think about salary or you're going to be making a lot of money, this, that. They know engineers, doctors, lawyers, or, you know, if you have a real good job, you you can make good money. But now, you know, soccer and professional sports is, is an option for that if you're good at it. So I think it's something that's going to become, we'll see more and more. 
you know, you see, we were seeing more South Asian people playing in, in England now, which is good. So hopefully it, it yeah. translates over to, to North America and Canada, I hope. Yeah. Is it also about the skill level or the physicality of, of our, uh, you know, Bangladeshi community or, uh, you know, is there any racism or something like that? Yeah, hard to say. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe, I think maybe there still might be because it's not normal or it's not common, right? And as soon as you have a skin color or you have, you know, you look different, it can it can create problems. But it's all about where you are. You know, I think in Canada where I grew up, it was pretty, pretty open um, because you have a very, it's pretty diverse. You know, we had a lot, I played with a lot of Indian people. I played with a lot of um, Arabic people, Middle Eastern people. We had a, a, a diversity. Whereas, you know, in the U.S., it's a bit more, it's a bit more um, segregated where maybe it's not as common. So I think it is a problem in, in some, in some areas. And, and that, that, that's what can, you know, stop having, you know, players like me or, or Bangladeshi or Indian kids from having that motivation to, to keep pushing. Yeah. So, um, and we'll talk about the national team. You've played a couple of matches for Canada national team. And uh, it's obviously a dream for anyone, any footballer to have played for the national team. So how are you seeing your future in Canada, the, the national team? Yeah, it's it's tricky with Canada. I'm getting older. And so, you know, it's 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 you know, if it's not happening now, when is it gonna happen? It probably won't happen, right? So yeah, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what happens. I'm not too much focused on playing for Canada now, I think, because realistically it's a bit difficult. Um, but yeah, growing up, you know, you you always want to play for your national team. And I think when I started going on like U18, U20 national team camps with the youth teams, that's what really made me want to become a professional because you know, just seeing the environment and seeing it and, and playing for Canada, that kind of gave you the motivation. But, you know, now I'm getting older, so I'm I'm, I'm curious to see what's going to happen um, and just kind of go with whatever, whatever, whatever comes along. And you have a very good option of Bangladesh because, uh, you know, we actually uh, depend on quite a few like players like you and, uh, you know, there are a lot of fans involved and, uh, they want this guy, this type of players like you and Hamza, and this sort of player, the icon players there. So you have an option there as well. And if I just uh, go back to last 20 years, if you play for Bangladesh, it will be like, you'll be the best midfielder in last 20 years for Bangladesh. So let's see how it works out in future. Uh, we'll see it. Uh, but are you eligible to play for Bangladesh? Because we've, we've already played for Canada. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. am because those those Canada games were just friendlies, and so they don't really count. Um, but yeah, Bangladesh is interesting. I've been a lot more open to it recently. I think you know the first couple of years after MLS, I was thinking, no, I want to wait. But yeah, now I w I'm keeping my options open, and I, I want to consider it, or at least you know I'm looking into it now. But I still don't know exactly how to do it or where to start. To be honest, it's it's not the best. But yeah, we'll see. I'm I'm planning on looking into seeing if I can get a passport this year, just to keep the option open. And then if I can get the passport. Why not, right? I mean, you see, like the Asia, the Asia, Asia Cup is happening right now, and it's crazy. Eighty thousand fans, so cool. Obviously, Bangladesh isn't there, but you know, games like that are so interesting, and I've been following them a bit. You know, I know they played in Australia, very cool. They have the qualifiers coming up, so it would be cool. I just don't know. I just don't know the timeline for how I can get a passport, what the process is, and we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. I'm open to it. I just don't know uh, how to get all the the paperwork and stuff. Then I don't know how it works. So we'll see. Yeah, surely. Okay, so uh, you have been to Bangladesh not long ago. So how was that experience uh, to be in Bangladesh and the people, the food and everything? How was that? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I mean, at home we speak Bangla, we eat Bangla, uh, Bangla food all the time. So um, it was cool going back to Bangladesh a bit older because you see it differently. When I was younger, maybe I didn't enjoy it as much because I thought, oh, it's a little bit dirty, it's a little bit loud, bugs, smoke. I, I didn't, you know, maybe you don't like it as much. But, you know, now that I went, I went two years ago, I was, I was a lot older, I could kind of see the beauty of it. And, you know, I really enjoyed it. It was very, very cool. Um, you know, I stayed in Dhaka for a week. So I saw the busyness of the city and how, you know, alive the city was. There's so much going on. And then I also went, you know, farther down into the village, uh, into the ground where it was a bit more quieter and so natural, so peaceful. Uh, so, yeah, I really enjoyed both, to be honest. And, uh, yeah, I, you know, I'll, I'll probably go again at some point. But, um, yeah, I enjoyed, I, enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed Bangladesh for sure. Yeah, okay. So uh, being a midfielder, what's, what are the, your tips you're giving to the Bangladeshi midfielders or the players in general that how do you prepare or 
how do you approach your game and uh, what are the lessons you take from them and uh, if you like to share the, your uh your some tips to the younger bangladesh players yeah i say first thing is work hard and practice every day and it sounds bad or doesn't you know simple but i think that's how i got better and better just one day for some reason when i was 13 or 14 i just came to practice and i just started pushing that much more every day it became a habit and then you know you get 1% better every day and then if you take one day off of practice and you don't push as much that's one day you lose right and then as a midfielder i'd say you know passing is the most important your vision awareness um passing forward is something that's becoming a lot more common is you want to make an impact on the game right you want to pass the ball forward instead of backwards and and just being brave um and don't be afraid to make mistakes and i think looking back on it maybe when i was first joining montreal even my first year in edmonton is i played very safe because i didn't want to make mistakes i was younger i wanted to play safe and simple but at the end of the day that won't get you that won't get you anywhere right if you want to be a, a big player an important player for any team you have to make those important passes you have to make those important turns and you have to want to get the ball and 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 play for your team especially as a midfielder you're the one that sets the tempo that you know controls controls the game and controls the tempo so that's what i would say is there any special drills or something that you want to recommend drills i don't know i've never been one of to do like i've never done any drills off the top of my head that i can think besides just like whatever you do in training you know passing drills possession drills possession is important but just you know typical soccer practice things you know we always do our 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 practices from when i was younger to now with professional as always you do you know you do your warm up you do passing you do possession and then you do game and that's all i know and in every single one you try to do the best you can you try not to miss a pass pass it to the right side make sure you pass it to the you know the strong side of the player that you're playing the ball to uh weight of pass that kind of stuff so drills individual drills i don't know but yeah yeah okay so you have talked about bangladesh football uh, just a few minutes ago and uh, we'd like to play a quiz with you about bangladesh football and let's see how much you know about bangladesh okay that will be tricky let's see <laughs> yeah i will ask you some questions and i'll give a couple of options you pick one okay okay so what's the fifa rank of bangladesh national team option a is 183 and option b is 186 oh so close numbers i say 183 yes you are correct aha who is the most capped footballer for bangladesh ever is it jamal bhuiya or mamunul i i will i'll say jamul jamul bayan <laughs> you are correct again yeah and how many times bangladesh won the south championship the south asian championship is it two or is it one i think i'll say maybe one yeah you are correct again haha <laughs> i i'm lucky i'm lucky i know my i know my history you are doing pretty well i mean yeah. and uh, how many times bangladesh made it to the asian cup is it one or is it two two that one i'll say maybe two ah uh, that was one in 1980 back in 1980 like oh wow what Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah, and then one last question for you. Who was the top scorer for Bangladesh in 2023? Is it Rakib Hussain or is it Mohammad Salim? Oh, I've heard both those names cuz I've, I've seen I've seen them or I followed them a little bit. Um I think they're both good players for what I heard. Uh I think I'll say Rakib. So, oh, it's Mohammad Salim. <laughs> Uh, Rakib okay, also okay. Played, he made some assist as well. He 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 can assist oh, and he can yeah, score. Okay. So yeah, fine. So you as you follow Bangladesh football quite a bit, so I would like to know the some of the players you would like to mention, like if you want to encourage them by mentioning their name, and who do you see as a very promising player for Bangladesh? Yeah, I mean I don't I don't follow like crazy, but I've seen you know I've seen you know the games and some of the lineups so. You know, Rakib and Morsalin are names I've heard. Uh, Jamal Boyan, he's probably the 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 main big guy, so that's pretty cool. Tariq Kazi, I've heard of, and I know yeah. he went and he's been doing well for Bangladesh. And I think we actually have a mutual friend from Finland that I played with that he might know too. So very interesting. Um, and then yeah, I know one guy from Edmonton is playing in the Bangladesh league now, Syed. Um, so yeah, Syed Shah. I think he's he goes by a different name too, but I don't know. So those are the names I know for the most part. The rest I don't really know.
or I, I've heard of the rest, or I know some of the names, but I don't know them, so there's no point shouting them out or whatnot. But yeah, yeah, sure. So you've got something to say to Bangladesh football fans in general. Uh, they are quite following you from ever since you've been in MLS. So if you want to share something to them, yeah, I, I I appreciate the love and support that I get from you guys on the other side of the world. Um, you know, it's something special to me and my family to see you guys supporting me. So I, I thank you for that. And yeah, I hope uh, Bangladesh can have success with football and soccer. And, you know, maybe and hopefully I can be a part of that. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. But appreciate all the love and support. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Hopefully Bangladesh can have good success uh, coming up. And maybe I can be a part of that too. We'll see. Yeah, sure. And we are almost at the end of the show. And I was, I'd like to thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure having you in our show. Uh, it's a big honor because we have never been in a, such a show of, of Bangladesh. So. Uh, it's a great honor how you responded positively and and uh, made your time to be here. So thank you a lot. I appreciate it a lot. Uh, hopefully we'll uh, catch up sometime soon in future. Yeah, thanks for having me. So this was it for our today's show. Uh, we hope that people enjoyed it and uh, hopefully our audience will get the better vision of Shamit Shom for future.